All right, gang, welcome to Forward Focus. I hope you all are hanging in out there right now. We are going to take a look at what is going on in the overall market currently and what this can tell us for where we are going over the next couple of weeks to next couple of months. Uh, we can even look shorter term too, as far as just next week. Uh, any market you want to look at, let me know and we'll get through as many of them as we can in the next 45 minutes. Let's see here. We are going to start off with overall indices to begin with so i'm going to pull up our nasdaq and s p s and all of that good stuff we'll start off with the s p 500 here today so this is the futures contract and what we're seeing here is that we are in this great big huge mammoth <laughs> megaphone right now so what we're dealing with is the extreme drop here, of course, that we had, you know, starting off at the end of February and then going throughout much of March. We've had this big megaphone that is coming out of that 2T type of formation that we've been talking about for the last year and kicked off at the end of uh, February there. And what we're having right now is just a pretty typical reactionary bounce after after this extreme move so a week or two weeks ago we looked at other examples of when this happens and how we often get these really rapid types of corrections and then they're often followed by a continuation of weakness so more often than not unless it is something that is like a news event where then the news event tends to you know basically be a complete overreaction and not have any long-term impact we don't usually see a complete recovery so things like a um a fed rate cut or a fed announcement or an unexpected news amount announcement in a stock we can get things that happen where they'll get that extreme drop and they'll basically overreact and then people are like oh well you know that didn't really matter too much and it will go and actually retake not only all of those losses but then go further back the other direction so we've seen that a lot with fed announcements over the course of well the entire history i've been trading so you'll get drops that'll go sharp and then they'll go back and go a lot of times see other way and I don't think that's going to be the case here I think we're looking at something that is going to have some more longer term impact and what we're going to be more prone to seeing are some additional downside moves coming out of this so I think we're seeing just like a normal move up and then a lot of times this will go and we'll get further downside now it's not generally going to be stronger than the first drop this was kind of an exception over here usually the continuation moves are not as extreme but we will usually still see lower lows which could easily mean 2000 on the ES very easily over the next you know year or so and possibly further it just kind of depends on how that momentum shifts you know how things progress as far as the virus is concerned and the effect that it has on the economy over the next course of the year and we really aren't going to know that at this point but what we will start to see in the charts is the momentum of that impact so we'll start to see momentum shifting and changing us and telling us hey is this really going to keep going lower or are we starting to see some sort of lows that can offer a turnaround and a, a better bounce that's more sustainable now one of the ways this sustainability comes about is a, a very specific pattern so when we see action like this if this comes back down like this and goes like this and you get like this kind of two-way shift a lot of times that can help lead to another move and sometimes it's not the secondary one that does it sometimes it'll be steep to begin with less steep and then less steep and for those of you that trade news like 
earnings or a lot of gap plays, this is going to be really familiar to you. You'll see really sharp initial reactions, slower continuation reactions, and then even more gradual continuation reactions, and then a flip and then it can turn back around. That's one way that this can play out. So a lot of times this will be the gap with the open, it'll crash, and then it'll start to shift and turn back around. And this move, these moves usually have two waves in them. So you'll see like you know two wave continuations, a bit of a bounce, another two wave continuation down, and then a bit of a bounce, two wave correction, and then it can flip. Now, the momentum of how this all plays out can change. So sometimes it can be let me clean, clear this up. Sometimes it can be really steep, still steep, still kind of fairly steep, pop back up, give another continuation down, and you know, then decide if it's going to turn around or if this is just going to go into another bigger continuation. So you'll see it, that shift in momentum. It just won't be as gradual with each of those waves. So you'll still have overall strength on that downside, which means that it would have the greater potential of then continuing lower, but probably after a bigger correction. So if it happens like this, where the momentum shifts more, it's easier for the trend to start to recover. So we don't know right now which way that momentum is going to play out. It's going to be something that we'll have to watch as it's undergoing that action. There are times when we get the extreme drop and it can sustain a move back up, but it's usually choppier on the way back up. I don't think the odds are that great that that's going to be the case here. So uh, I'm looking more for things on the shorter term that can flip this and turn it back around again. So when we're looking at the uh, smaller time frame charts here now, here's a daily chart. And what we're seeing is that even though there was a little bit of a momentum shift here, it wasn't enough that we will normally see it have a strong sustainable turnaround. So with more of like a V bottom, it's easier for this to do two waves and then do something to try to flip it back over. And we're basically at that do or die point where it decides, hey, am I going to create that reversal pattern now to, for that to happen? In the cases where it does manage to continue, you'll still usually get a pause here and then it will just develop some sort of continuation pattern. So what we need to watch here over the next week or so is how does momentum shift as we're at this resistance level? Let me throw up some Fibonacci retracements for you. So what you can see here is that we are right smack at that 50% retracement level. So it's a pretty good level. If it holds this level, it can still manage to break the prior lows. But usually once you get to 50%, 61.8% on corrections, when it comes back down to the prior lows, you'll get a stall. So in the um, you know proposed potential way that this can play out, you one way that this could happen is it could pull down into here do that correction and then do that secondary move so that first move second move then a correction and then it can go and do another two waves and kind of shift the momentum again that's one way that this can play out so right now because this has pulled 50 percent and it's done so with pretty pretty decent momentum the previous low zone will be a support level but we don't really know how well it's going to react off of that level. So right now I am in a much shorter time frame mode. I am focusing more on kind of the intraday scalp type of moves. Swing trades here aren't at good levels because here was where the swing trade setups were basically taking place where you had your first upside move and then your correction here into um, support. Basically it was the support from this channel breaking. So this is a secondary move and we're coming up there. There's still a little bit of wiggle room, but you'll notice the overall momentum is slower than it was over here. So that also can make it easier to react off of that zone. So it is going to 
I believe, have a harder time pushing through this level. I think that as we head into next week, we'll probably see reversal patterns in today. And then we need to watch how fast those reversals happen. Because if they're average to stronger than average, that's going to make it even easier to come back down into this zone, especially if it does it with like a one, two, three, with just like a kneecap correction in here, that will sustain even further selling later on. So, don't really know where that's gonna go right now. You know, it, this could do like a um, two wave in here, kind of pull up, that could do a shift here so that you get the strong, slower, slower into there. That's one way that this could develop at this point. We do have this resistance here, as Karen mentioned. So this little wedge in here, that's where we're at right now. And 76.4% for an extension level is basically the first level of resistance that we can start to see reversals happen when the momentum into that 76.4 is slower than the first bounce off of the lows. So in other cases, we won't even see it push through the 76.4% and hold that zone and flip back around. Now, right now on the smaller intraday, it looks like we'll, we will get a push. It's trying to do, you know, potential for a second move up there. Let's go see this on an even smaller scale here. This is our 60 minute, here's our 15. So you can see not really a good pattern here up at the highs. We had that megaphone going into the weekend or into today, let me see here. Right here is our lovely little megaphone. But it couldn't do a full 100% extension. So sometimes this can go and play out a little bit longer and then do a second wave. So it would treat this as like a two wave correction. So this would be the first wave, this would be the second wave, and then it go do a mission move. And that would bring it into that 100% um, extension on that 60 minute chart. So I do think that that is a possibility still here with how this is currently playing out on like the 15 to 60 minute time frame right now. Could we get a momentum reversal? Probably not right here. I don't think you're going to see one happening here. Um, so what we're looking, what I'm looking at basically is if this is the first move up here after this like little rounded low, here's a kind of that megaphone. It popped really steep. So if this can go into like another base here, that can go and do a, another move up that would bring it into that 100%. And then maybe you'll get like a momentum reversal at that point that would help turn it around again. So that's where I would prefer to see that momentum reversal happening. So we would be essentially at like, you know, this zone in here right now. And so it, it's treating this like a two-wave correction, basically. That's what I'm thinking as we go into next week. So uh, it'll start out, you know, I'm looking at you know, more of a range-bound type of action as we go into Monday. It's tricky right now because we've got um, the three-day weekend and we had news with oil um last night too after the markets had already closed uh let me see i posted that link let me grab that so we've got the opec agrees to historic 10 million barrel per day production cut so we are going to see that playing out on monday too um, probably going to be an extremely active day, again, for oil traders. I'll copy this link for you guys, too, so if you can want to go see it, I'll post it in the chat channel here. So, <laughs> of course, this corresponded to the market closing before they announced that, but yeah. Um, let's see here. With the Fed back stopping almost all debt, do you believe that the market will retest lows as it normally would in this type of massive drop? I do. I don't think that their efforts are going to 
fully manage to sustain things at this moment, I think that we're still going to get um, that level of correction or pullback. Obviously, you know, if momentum or something changes here, I'll change my outlook. But with most of what I've experienced in the past, I think that that that's going to happen. Um, it, it's totally a unique situation. We haven't, you know, obviously never been in something like this. You know, we've got, I've traded through 9-11, I've traded through to 20, uh, 2008 with all of that and with the tech bubble back in 2000, but this is, this is a little bit different. And as Karen mentioned, you know, the Fed's doing this with taxpayer dollars. This is not, I mean, they have to come up with the money somewhere. So uh, basically, you know, even when they go and like print extra money, they're basically just devout, devaluing the dollar here. So I think people are going to start to realize, hey, we're paying a lot more for goods. Yay, we get this check in the mail, or some of us, some do, but you're paying that all back, <laughs> you know, with the higher cost of goods and everything right now. So it's it's not like we're getting like really free money here. And it doesn't apply to our entire population. It, it's there's so many working pieces in it. It's really, you know, difficult to predict that. All we can do is predict what's going on in the charts. And this is why I, I tell people, you know, I don't necessarily care what is happening as far as the news goes. I care what the reactions to the news are. And what have we seen with typical, you know, follow through after similar reactions. So what I've just drawn for you this morning, that is a very typical follow through for how we will see things play out. Yeah, we normally see it on the shorter term, like even on intraday charts, but it still applies to the bigger time frame. It's just going to be on a much grander scale. So that's one of the main ways that we would see the market be able to start to turn around. Let me see if um we're not really in earnings season right now, so we probably don't have a lot of examples of it, but let me see if I can um, pull up some a gappers and stuff here to show you, give you an idea of what those have been. If you guys have a list of things that had recent gaps and recent earnings that you've been trading. I know Scott, Carl, some of you guys trade. Some of these Karen might know. I don't want the 10 second, let's see here. Even like with the gap here in Starbucks. So Starbucks here, this was a, a massive upside gap, right? But the extent of this type of move here, this is kind of like the same type of thing we were talking about. So we get the extreme drop, you get the correction in this case, so it's probably close to 76.4. You get the two wave continuation, goes to the lower low here, but basically that prior zone of support, shifts again, does another two wave move, and then it, it manages a bit of a recovery. In this case, it, it still turns back around again, but that's the type of thing that we could see playing out on the weekly time frame now. So it, it's a good example still, where we do have that extreme move, we've got the recovery, but it still has the good chance to go. And this would be like the equivalent of 2000 on the ES. So that's, you know, that's a really good one. Um, what are good reversal patterns that you can study this weekend? The 2B, study the 2B. So here is another example down here. So if you got like a big drop, in this case, I don't have my data going far enough back, but then you get the continuation drop and then see this pattern here, right at this low, where that does that shift. That is a huge pattern for reversing things around again. So that is something to watch for on the weekly time frame right now. Yeah, it's going to be long and drawn out if that develops, but it's a very high probability setup for something that we could see play out over the coming weeks, coming months even. Let me add another day on here. 
uh, a couple days actually. We'll just put this like that. So go back and look for things that had like a really extreme flush. And how did they manage to recover from that type of flush? So here's another example. You know, the really extreme drop with the trap and it managed to recover about 38.2%, maybe close to 50%, retested low, then did another two wave up. So this ended up being more of an avalanche instead. So then it came down, it did this, it shifted again, but it just couldn't get going. This would have been where, if it was going to manage reversal to sustain it, it would have done it here. So this is an example of, hey, you got that same idea, that same concept, but it failed. And this is what the failure looked like. It tried to pop, couldn't sustain it, went into the range, and then gave the continuation. So you still had the buy attempt, but it wasn't sustainable here. So that would be a heads up that, you know, this is still going to go and, and drop again. So this is another good example for you of, you know, how this type of, of reaction can play out. And this is really close to what we saw happening on the weekly time frame in the overall market. Here's another example. Again, the extreme move, the shift, and then the shift again, but it didn't give the reversal in this case. It still went shifted. There's the same type of setup that said, hey, this is going to go lower again. And then it continued it. So this is our most likely spot right here that a recovery would happen in this series. And yet you've seen a couple of examples where it didn't. And look at what those look like too, because that's going to give you a heads up for how it won't be able to manage. So here's one that you know did manage total recovery, even though it was you know, a pretty extreme drop, but then it still went and turned back around again. Here's another example but look at how that shifted there. It did that two wave shift right there at that low and that helped pull this up. So is it possible we are right here on the overall market since the weekly time frame did have a little bit of that shift on it? It's possible. Um, the probability of it sustaining like this I don't think is as great, but even look at you know how that came back into you know previous highs here. Let me turn this it still really still showed struggles falling off of this. So if this does manage to sustain it, it would look probably more like what you're seeing here, where we would be the, at the equivalent of right, right about in here. Let me show you that weekly time frame so you can see it comparison. I'm gonna actually, since I changed this chart, I'll pull it up on the NASDAQ. Oops. All right, so here is what we would be looking at for comparison where here's our first drop, correction, second drop. First drop, correction, second drop, shift in momentum, shift in momentum. And in this case, we had a little bit of a really super messy momentum reversal. Popped, popped, paused, continued, paused, continued. Um, on this, could this pause here be more akin to what's going on here though? So are we really more at like this level? In which case, here's the momentum reversal and it went into a longer correction again. And so when I said, you know, can we get some sort of a momentum shift here this week, then that can lead to farther downside. In this case, it played out where it went into a base and then was able to go and pull up. Whereas if it was going to fail, it would have done so here. So I, I think that, you know, comparing this zone here more to here makes more sense. 
So I guess we would be closer to the equivalent of right here. But look at how similar those are. See that to that? So this is kind of like more of like the best case scenario for how this could play out. Because it still manages to end up holding up, even though it gets, you know, really messy over here, it still manages to hold up. Eventually it falls again, but it manages to recover to the previous high before it does it. And that's the thing, I think that even if we manage recovery back to those previous levels, it's not going to hold it. I don't think we'll see a break through that level. It'll be more like these, you know, where it, it hits it and then turns back around. But again, at the moment, I don't think that's going to happen. It is one of the possibilities, which you've seen there with what, what I just showed you. But things that are more like this are more probable at the moment. Let me show you, let's see, Chewy, C-H. Karen said Chewy is a good one to look at. Here we've got a three minute, let's see, our daily time frame. Chewy has been going crazy. How many of you guys use Chewy? I'm just curious. A couple. I do. Oh, this looks like it still has more strength than to next week. <laughs> well, my wife does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Karen says their prices are better than Amazon and they're going to get into pet insurance and pet meds. Yeah, I get specialized food through them too. So that makes a lot of sense that that's where they're going. But this, even for a measured move, this looks like it still has more upside into next week. I don't know when the AI payload. Looks like pretty recent. Let's see. I don't see anything that would show signs of this turning around anytime soon. I mean, I think you can get like some short term corrections, but this type of reversal off of a low, a lot of times that leads to a pretty good continuation on the uptrend. Well, let's see here. Intraday, we're you know pretty extended, but it still can extend further. Let's put the fib expansions on here. Extensions. So we're right smack at that 76.4. So this might pause, but I do think that's going to hit that 100%, 46 within the week. Um, B A. Hmm. I don't know. It is in a wedge, and wedges have a tendency to often give a false break and then break the other way. So it could even false break lower and then break higher again. So watch for whichever way this breaks first and then look for a reversal pattern after that point. That's what I would do with this. But I don't. I wouldn't do anything. I don't think into next week. It almost looks like it's going to break higher out of this. It's right at like a do or die point, but the upside momentum is still stronger. So if you could do like a second wave up, 
But if that is not gaining momentum, it's more likely that you'll then get another break down again. So it would have to gain some really strong momentum to sustain it coming out of there. Earnings are on April 28th. Uh, so that's still a little bit out. That would give, so what, what, that, that, what that would do is that would give it time to do a false break and then do a real directional move after earnings. That would be something to watch for. Gold, well, as you guys know, I've been pretty bullish on gold for a while. I'm just gonna pull up the long term here. I'll just pull up GLD. We're at about, about 76.4% here. I had some more data on here. I might go pull up the futures. Let's see. Retracements. 61.8. So it's about 76.4 off this high. Let's see if I was right. Yes, I was. Um, so I, I still am bullish on this. I think gold has potential for higher highs to break those 2012 highs. It's really nice rounding off. Not much for correction so far. Just a steep one here, but it managed to recover it pretty well. So longer term, I don't have any problem continuing to hold this. Um, let's see. Monthly. A lot of times with this pattern, it will come up, it'll retest the zone of this previous high. If it's rounding and retest it, it it has an easier chance of punching through it. If it has more like a two wave or a three wave move up into the previous highs, then you're more likely to get a reaction off of it. So since it's doing more of like the, the punchy move, I think that it's easier for it to have a chance to push through it. Oh, I age for oil. We're all bad at that measure move. I'm going to go grab a futures chart for this. Hold on a second. That's going to look different than this. Gosh, you guys, I'm tired. Yawning on you. All right, let's see here. One of my friends sent me something yesterday and they're like, hey, you got to do a coffee nap. I'm like, what's a coffee nap? It's like when you chug a ton of coffee and then go take a nap for 20 minutes and then the coffee hits you so when you wake up from your nap you're wide awake I'm like i don't know about that <laughs> i'm sorry i post this <laughs> is this something you people have actually tried the coffee nap is great <laughs> so is this is a thing then right I'm like, I'd never heard of this before. <laughs> so here's what we're looking at on the monthly time frame. So we had that really good breakdown here with kind of like a, a, that check mark type of move. It's a type of avalanche here. We're not close to a measure move on that yet on this. Um, the The weekly here is still you know pretty good for further downside but of course it's really 
heavily dependent upon news right now. So we're seeing some pretty extreme moves on oil with news right now. I'm not exactly sure how things are going to play out on Monday with oil. It's going to be something where I'm going to watch where it ends up opening on, on Sunday night and see, you know, basically go from there. The charts show that we have room from our downside, but with how news is coming out, we're seeing lots of lots of movement. So I'm not placing any bets really. I've been oil as a long-term short, but really, really watching news here. But the charts do have room for more. Again, on recoveries from drops like this, if it does manage to hold lows and recover, it's usually going to be a choppier type of recovery. So you might get like short-term pops, but overall momentum slower than the drop. What's Chewy? Chewy is um, like Amazon, but for all things pet related. So C-H. E W Y Chewy.com. So you can't get like all of your cat food, dog food, bird food, pet furniture, you know, everything like that. You can get it from their website. Um, specialty um, like prescription foods you can get through them too. And they have, um, like, you can subscribe like you do on, on Amazon. So, like, you can have, like, a shipment every month or a shipment every three months or whatever you want to do. We have cat litter, everything. I'm just looking through your guys' questions here. I might have to totally try that coffee nap, Chris. <laughs> I got the coffee part right now, but I think that I've kind of messed up by not going and doing the nap part right away. Let's see, what else do you guys want me to look at here? Got about 10, 20 more minutes, depending on how long I want to stick around today. It's funny, like I schedule Mentor Mondays for like 30 minutes and I don't think I've ever done a 30 minute Mentor Monday. And then Forward Focus is supposed to be 45 minutes. I don't know if we've ever done 45 minutes. <laughs> Costco, there's another one with current market, pretty active. Uh, Costco is at, you know, some extreme levels here. I think that, you know, this is a place where we could get things widening up that could go into a wider range. You can see it has that um, kind of parabolic type of move here. So sometimes these can just pull down and be done. I don't think that's going to be the case here, given like what we're seeing right now, but certainly potential for a little avalanche is in here. What I think we could see is that, again, that same kind of shift and then another pullback up on Costco. I think, you know, compared to the overall market, you'll, you'll see better strength on, on Costco than the overall market. You can see like a smaller almost momentum reversal on the, on the daily chart, but not really. So with this huge drop here and then, you know, the way this is recovered, it might pull down a little bit more over time, but I think it has a better chance of doing recovery. So I, I definitely like it as far as like relative strength goes. KSS, really good support here. This is again, something where when these type of things recover, they don't just generally shoot right back up you're more likely to see choppy recoveries. This could still widen up here. It could still go and do 
that extra kind of shift move to try to get better recovery off of this level. At this point, I would just be focusing kind of, you know, shorter term, and if you're looking longer term, playing some of the short term moves and then just holding partial as a longer term hold. So like playing like some of the swing moves, like for the gaps and then holding those for a few days. And then if you're looking for, you know, further upside, maybe for this to do a correction and then a second wave up, holding partials and then adding back in when you get another buy setup. Just since this is so steep here, after two wave move, watch that momentum on the second wave because that could flip it back down again. So I think KSS is good for, you know, swing trades, shorter terms right now, but longer term, it's probably going to be choppier. Have I started by stocks for my IRA right now? A, a couple, but not a lot. Um, AMD. Sorry, this is a question on AMD. I haven't bought this one, to, you know, adding back into this. I have this long term. This is when I didn't close out. Um, I, I think AMD is going to hold up pretty well. I don't think we're going to see like an extreme sell off on AMD. I don't know that we're necessarily going to hit any higher highs anytime soon. But I wouldn't worry as much about this one. You've got a good two wave move up. So I think that you've got chances for this to recover. But longer term, I, I mean, even slightly higher highs, I don't really see a, a major setup on this right now. Shorter term, it's, you know, swing trade. It has a potential right here that it could do a tilted Phoenix. That's kind of what I'm expecting to happen on AMD. So we could get, you know, a little bit of a another correction and then another pullback up. So in that case, that would offer buy setup. So here, Camel Soup. This is one I picked up the other day. I don't know how long I'm gonna hold it. I know we were talking about this a couple of weeks ago, um, but the reason was the same pattern that I was discussing kind of as we just got started. So it had like that shift there and that allows us to pull up. So I'm still just kind of sitting on this, waiting, you know, see if this uh, can give that second move up on the larger time frames. But I don't know how long I'll end up holding it. Um, over here is going to be some pretty feisty resistance again. Still in Verizon. So even though it's like a little bit momentum reversal-ish, the pullbacks were slower. So it's not really a major reversal pattern on this. I think it's going to be pretty steady. OK. I am not familiar with this one. This is probably going to creep down a bit more. So what can often happen is this kind of, you know, chop down here and you'll probably see little short pops. It's China Starbucks, huh? LK fraud. <laughs> like I said, I don't know much about this one. Karen says the problem with LK is that they cooked their books and could just die. 
Yeah, I mean, this is not a, a good chart. Like I said, usually when you see this, it'll just kind of keep going. And sometimes you'll get these pops. Pop, these Those pops usually aren't sustainable. Um, so I, I would frankly stay away from this one. <laughs> and especially given what <laughs> there's said here. But um, the chart alone doesn't look, look too great to me. Let's see what we've got on the 60 minute. Yeah, there's nothing. Apple. So Apple is running into like the same problem that a lot of the other things are. They've got the pop and then you've got the potential shift here. So it's looking basically like what the overall market is doing. So can this shift sustain or is it gonna go and flip back around again? It's really tricky right here. It's gonna come down to what smaller momentum shifts end up happening at this point. I mean, this still has room that it can pull up in today, but it really would not take much to turn this back around again. A lot of times that will give you like a, a double top. I just pointed with my finger. You guys can't see me point. <laughs> see, kind of like that thing did there. <laughs> Sean, you saw me pointing though, right? Yeah, yeah, see, he's like, yeah. I don't know how much of this he's up actually absorbing, but we'll hope he's learning here. What? Are you, are you learning? Okay. You gotta be paying attention over there, kid. So NVIDIA, what? What did you just say? No. Yeah, you should not say that. <laughs> Somebody's trying to get into trouble. So this can go and do like a two wave move up here and uh, look for continuation. So NVIDIA is holding up pretty well and definitely a much better recover the recovery than the overall market here. Uh, Richard, I have not. Richard asked about um, health issues with 5G network workers that are installing them in Europe. I have not heard anything of that. Now I'm curious. Um, Netflix, so usually what would happen with this type of pattern with Netflix, it'll go and do another move up and then it can try to correct again. So, I would look for more like a 2T type of move up here. And that's how this is holding. So Netflix is holding it pretty well. That would be the most common pattern that would happen, would go like that. So I think it's a little bit too early still, but that's what I would watch for. If you can get that happening on the weekly time frame. TNDM. So TNDM, a common pattern for this, and this is not something I've traded much, it would go, if at all, it, it can go and do like a break and then go into like another move where it does like a false first break and goes into another correction before it tries to go again. That would be very common based upon what it's forming right now. So just charts alone, it can do that pop and go into another base and then pop again. That would be a very common pattern for what's happening here on this monthly time frame. Obviously way bigger time frame, but that's what we're looking at.
Yes, correct. PTON, Peloton. Anyone have a, one of these? <laughs> I'm just going to see what all you guys are doing and what you have out there. Anyone have a Peloton machine? Yeah, I don't either. <laughs> Does anyone here? <laughs> a couple of people have relatives that do. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I am It seems kind of like a like a one trick pony type of thing. So I don't know that this stock is really going to go do much. I it has room to do like a a two of continuation here to try to pull back up to this level, but like longer term prospects, I don't see a major pattern in here. This could even go into a megaphone. But I don't know. It's not something I've been interested in investing in, but with um with the virus, I think a lot of it could be like a short term interest i don't know sustainability so as far as like a swing trade goes that gives a breakout there i would look for it as a swing trade but probably not longer term investment I was saying a commodity with online, they usually normally fade away over time. Yeah, I mean, they get like a lot of hype. They, they put a ton of money into advertising. And if it was going to take off, you would think now would be like a good time for it. And people have so many other options. It's not like it's completely unique. In fact, they'll have like way more options as far as like um, um, competition. It's not like they are um, like cornering a market here. Exactly, Richard, it's too much competition. I mean, gosh, you can go and pull up a YouTube video and do it along with, they're, they're even coming up with 3D YouTube videos. So, <laughs> Sean and I were walking through the Great Pyramid, exploring the pyramids this week. 3D on YouTube. KO. KO again is another one at a good resistance level. I think it's going to play along with what's happening, what, what goes on with the Dow. I don't think it's going to vary too much from overall market. So everything I talked about with the ES earlier is what I would look for with KO2. So you've got that resistance. It's at this point where it can go and do that flip. If it doesn't and manages to hold up here, we can get another push. But again, breaking the, this level, very, very difficult. Intraday, again, you can see that slower momentum up. So intraday, you're at a zone where we would see potential shorts. It hasn't filled the gap. So it has that gap zone to try to fill. But I would 
play it really tightly. So a lot of times what I do when something is coming up to a level like this, where it's kind of like a do or die point, but I'm not 100% sure it's going to die, is that I'll look intraday on the smaller time frames and I'll short the smaller time frames, take gains off short more on bounces take gains off so that if it fails and does like break higher for example oftentimes i'll still end up with a gain because of how i did the position management early on so that's what i'll do at levels like this where i think there's going to be a lot of chop back and forth and then it has the potential to do a pullback but it could also manage to hold up and then if it holds up a lot of times like if something is you know playing around up here at highs you'll see things like this happening and then you can get out. But if you've been, you know, shorting at the resistance levels and taking a little bit off, even if it's not at, you know, perfect support, by the time it breaks, you can still end up with a gain. Um, those of you that are in League of Traders, we did a couple of weeks of advanced trade management here earlier last month. You'll wanna go back and watch those, especially if you're on a monthly membership because um, you get logs going back for a month. So go back and watch those before they they fall off if you're on an annual then you'll get them forever so you can go back and not only watch the current advanced trade management but every time we've done advanced trade management in the past two so go watch those right now because that's what you would want to do at things that are at levels like this where you might be hoping to get in a bigger long-term short or a bigger long-term buy but it's more iffy we call it the zone of pain because it can go either way and it depends upon the smaller shorter term momentum shifts that determine which way it actually ends up breaking but hopefully i've given you guys enough um, examples of how we do get moves each way that if you go back and you study those and look at those you'll see how they shift to to point the focus one way or the other. It's all about knowing what those possibilities and probabilities are in the first place. Let's see, did I miss anybody? Ooh. BYND. Okay, if you asked about something and I haven't covered it yet, um, please repost. There are a lot of posts there. Mm, BYND again, this is another one of those, I think it's, that can go like that and then break again. So, it's it's another one that can do like a false break and then turn back around. Don't really have a huge bias on it right now. It's all gonna depend upon how momentum shifts at this point. So sometimes this can do, you know, a, a two-way move and go and break down again. It's not at a point for a trigger yet. It would usually trigger when it gets to be about like 61.8% extension over here. And that momentum, how that acts can shift. So these are generally higher risk trades. ZM, so this pattern, I've, I've seen examples where it will hold this and still manage to pull up. It would be a little bit better if it did a slightly lower low though, before it really tried, you know, something that kind of like pulled back in like that. I mean, that would be preferable to get it to try to bounce, but I have seen it do moves like this that it would manage to hold the 60 minute here. Let me look at the larger chart. I think we're gonna go back further. So often, and then depending on how like this bounces, where'd my pen go? There we go. So depending upon how this bounces, you know, retest of this can get you another bounce. Pretty extreme move. 
I do think we'll get, you know, holding this zone a little bit better. Just because it's pulled back a good 50%. Longer term though, I don't know how well that's gonna hold up or not. Cause it could just shift and come back down again. So I think trades here at this point are gonna be higher risk right now. This one. So it wouldn't be unusual for this to like go like this and kind of like, you know, try to still manage to come back up to that high, just the way this is kind of rounding off and it's right at a long zone of basing over here. But it's iffy. Did I do KSS? I don't think I did. Yeah, see how this one does? It went and did that extra shift. And so it kind of widened up there. That helps this get a better bounce off of that low. So on a lot of these, what we're seeing is they're at zones like this. So if they can do like extra flushes, it will help them do a better bounce. This is a 60 minute time frame, but that's the same type of thing that we would want to see happening on the daily on a lot of those. Let's see. U B A B A. All right, we'll do a couple more here and then we will wrap up and I'll get this posted over on YouTube for you guys. B A B A again, this can is that something that it can go and do another push, but then I think we'll turn back around. So this will be really major resistance here. It's another one that's very highly reliant upon what, what happens on the smaller time frames. USO, I mean, we looked at oil. It's a lot like that KSS. And so these like these type of things can easily go and pull like that again. And then you might get a pop. The main risk on a lot of these right now with like oil related is that they have the potential for another major drop. SDC. <laughs> Bill, is it just me or does much of this analysis end with a big downward arrow to the lower right of the chart? <laughs> oh, I, I see, I already auto-corrected that in my brain. <laughs> he said lover, not lower. <laughs> lower. <laughs> J and U G and S D C. This is like dead, right? <laughs> oh man, I don't know. We've got a megaphone here. I was trying to gain some steam a little bit. Would you squish it up? See, this is what I was talking about though, how those things can kind of like build. So you can start off when you get the big drop, right? And you get the shift. This is an example of how it does manage to hold up. So we're like, at this zone here right now with the overall market. So how does it react at that zone? So if you get like a shift like this, it can be easier to break down. If you get like a pullback like that, it can be easier to break down. So next week I think is gonna be pretty telling or the next two weeks in particular, but we've seen a couple of different options. So if that pulls down, then what we would usually see is something like this, and then again, another two waves, and then that can bring in a better bounce again. And it would happen at this point. So we're at that do or die point, and that's what we're looking at in the overall market. But I've shown you a couple of examples where it has managed to still hold and make it back up.
SDC. And, you know, this is another example of how we will see that kind of shift happening. This is a momentum reversal, one, two, three, pops, and then it's trying to do like a momentum reversal plus, but it's not really getting going off the ground here. But even how this pulled into this low again, see how it kind of started really rapidly, shifted and then shifted farther, and then bounced. That's how a lot of the bear markets end. And then in something that truly ends, this will gain steam again. We are not seeing that right now on SDC on this intraday chart, but that's how they would normally try to do it. This SDC intraday chart looks like we're gonna try to push for a lower low. But it's also at a you know a pretty good level. So that lower low could just do that two wave move that would allow that bounce. And now I've got a fly attacking me. He's attacking you too. We had a would be in the house yesterday. That was crazy. I know. Would you say it's not uncommon to see cheaper stocks spike up and come down like that? Yeah, that's totally normal. That happens all the time. This is very, very, very common in cheap stocks. Basically anything under um, probably $8 a share, but it's most common in something that's around four or five. You are welcome, you guys. All right, well, we're gonna wrap on up here. And uh, I've got some more Egyptian studies to work on with a certain little dude here this afternoon. So I hope you guys all have a good weekend and I will see you back here next week. So keep an eye on YouTube. Um, I will also post it in Telegram and uh, that's where you will find the replay for today's session.